Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Hope everybody's doing great today. So uh, big Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody. Hope everybody's getting in the Christmas spirit and uh, looking forward to the holiday coming up. So I have been super busy this last week. Uh, you guys might have noticed I've been pretty much MIA on social media. I have been completely tearing my entire shop apart and reorganizing everything. So uh, you'll notice that the casting area hasn't been touched. Um, I needed to get products done over this week. So mainly what I'm talking about is the turning area and, and basically everything on the other side of the shop, all the machines and stuff. So I pretty much have moved every machine in my shop like 50 times at this point, <laughs> but I think that I have a pretty workable layout that I'm pretty happy with. I think it's going to make, uh, I think it's going to improve efficiency. It's going to improve cleanliness, let's say. I think it's going to be easier to keep clean now, uh, but I still actually, I have a lot of stuff to do still. Uh, but so part of what I wanted to do today was kind of show you guys, you know, what's the state of the shop, you know, right now. Um, a lot of the stuff, like I said, has been kind of positioned where I wanted, I think, but I got to run dust collection. I have to, I'm trying to get some cabinets in here, um, and some storage solutions. So I got uh, like empty spaces here and there and stuff piled on, on top of each other. Uh, and then the week between Christmas and New Year's, I'm, I was kind of, I kind of mentioned this before, but I'm basically going to kind of take off that week. Um, sort of kind of you know, quote unquote take off that week. I'll still be making blanks and probably shipping orders, but um, my focus is going to be kind of rearranging the casting area. I'm not super thrilled with this area either. So lots of changes going on. And, and a lot of this kind of started, the reason I moved all the machines around is because I got a belt sander, the, the jet belt and disc sander. So kind of needed to find a place for it. So I thought, let me just start that part of the shop organization now and then do the rest later. Uh, but today, uh, so uh, another note, we still don't have heat. Uh, the heater has not been fixed. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. But we're making do. Um, the, the shop hasn't really gotten that cold. Um, my lower limit really for casting, I don't really like dropping too much below 60. Um, that's just kind of my personal thing. Um, I haven't really been doing a Lumalite clear slow set. Uh, that's, that's pretty much the only clear that I use. Um, I've been doing casting with white. I just, that stuff heats up more. Um, but the, the slow set is formulated to not get as hot. So I don't really love using that in lower temperatures, just kind of for my products anyway. However, I did, I, I have been making a few blanks. I, I ran out of one of them. And so I wanted to kind of share with you guys first off, um, what I did to kind of fix that problem, let's say. So I'm going to kind of, let's see, how am I going to do this? I guess I'll just move this camera so you can kind of get a view of it. So what I have is a, let me switch here. What I have, that is not the right, <laughs> I always pick the wrong one. There it is. So I got one of these little heat dish things. You can get them at Costco and it's just a radiant heater. Uh, but if you direct it directly at your pressure pot, it'll heat your pressure pot up pretty nicely. Um, so that's kind of the solution that I've come up with. Like I said, it's not super cold in here, but I still would rather be, you know, you know, optimally, I wanna be at 70 degrees. That's what I'm really shooting for. That ain't gonna happen right now, but I can get this pressure pot up to like 75 pretty easily just using this radiant heater. Now, uh, there's other ways that people do things with the pressure pots. They'll put like electric blankets or, or like the heating pads around them to kind of keep them warm while your casting is in there. It just helps facilitate the, the curing process. Uh, and then once it's ready to be pulled out of the pressure pot, we have that room. I, uh, if, for anybody that doesn't know, when our heater went out, we kind of, I set up a room. Uh, we have, we have like a little office room and I put one of those little space heaters in there. That room is at 70 degrees. So I'm leaving all of my resins in there overnight and, uh, anything that, that I don't really want to be subjected to cooler temperatures goes in there, including the blanks. Once I pull them out of the pressure pot, I take the brick and let it kind of sit in there until I get ready to cut it up. Then I take it straight home. So we've been kind of dealing with stuff and I know a lot of you guys, you know, you're working in a garage workshop, which is not heated necessarily, definitely not um, overnight. So there's, there's ways that we can kind of get around this stuff. And I just want, wanted to kind of share, you know, what I've been doing to kind of deal with the, the cold temperatures in my shop lately. So we're hoping we should be getting a new heater uh, someday, but uh, our landlord hasn't gotten back to us, which is wonderful. So <laughs> we're just dealing with it right now. Uh, the other thing that we have for our shop is we have one of those propane um, 
like heater things you just hook a tank up to it and it just you know blows hot air out um, so that's been helping kind of keep the shop um, get it up to uh, about 60 but it's a 4,000 square foot shop and that thing can't heat the whole place so anyway so anyway hopefully you guys are doing good like i said let's uh reposition the camera and talk about so we are going to cast something today using alumalite clear and like i said i wanted to kind of show you what i've been doing for my setup to kind of alleviate any issues that could happen and for anybody that doesn't understand what the problem is if resins don't fully cure like if you stop the curing process it's going to cause problems with the blanks um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, they cast their blanks, they, maybe even you heat up your room, um, cast the blanks and then pull them out of the pressure pot, but leave them in the garage and it freezes overnight. And so right at that point, you know, if it's freezing, you've pretty much stopped the curing process with most resins. And what can happen is they can be brittle or, or flaky, dusty, it just it can cause problems if it hasn't fully cured. Most resins take, you know, five to seven days to fully cure. At that point, it doesn't matter what the temperature is, but uh, just wanted to kind of mention, you know, what's, what's the deal with all this stuff? <laughs> so if anybody, I keep picking the wrong thing. Um, here we go. So anyway, so what we're going to do today is make some holiday blanks. I got some red and, and green glitter from the Glitter Hippo. Um, and then these things, I had a ribbon and we got these little paper shreds that are red and green. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Stephen Daniels sent both of these things to me last Christmas. So I thought we'd pull it out. We got a lot of it left and uh, we're, we're just gonna make one blank today. I'm just gonna do one casting um, because I still have, like I said, a lot of stuff to do. Um, so we'll do the casting part at the end. I wanna quickly just show you guys what the state of the shop is. I hope you guys don't mind. I just thought it'd be kind of fun to see what I'm up to and kind of just point out a couple of things that I've changed and why I've done that, You know what I'm hoping to get out of the changes. So let me stop real quick and see what you guys, man, you guys have been chatting it up. Woo! Wow. Yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, my family's in town, so there's a couple things going on. We got family that just came in town. That's another reason why I, this, today's going to be a little bit short. I also only have, I only, I've been just shooting that heat gun at one pressure pot and just kind of using that for the Illumilite clear stuff. So I thought we'd use that and, and just get one done today, but... Uh, let's see here, but we got family, so I'm going to have to meet up with them later. So let's make sure I'm not missing any, anything going on in the chat here. If anybody has any questions, I, I'll probably be kind of doing stuff. I may not see it, but if you guys super chat, I will see those if you have questions. So it's just a little, Hey, Nick, tech ed fireman. How's it going, buddy? I just saw your name in there. Welcome to the stream, bud. Hope everything's doing good over there in New York. Let's see. Yeah, a lot of people. Jamie's here. What's up, buddy? Man, we've been we, so we were we were thinking about the our, getting our tickets for uh, uh, Maker Central next year. Super chat. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. You're the best, man. I need to send you a Christmas present. It'll probably be a little bit like way late, so maybe we'll call it a New Year's present. But I got to send you something, man. You rock. Um, we were thinking about Maker Central though, and uh, like we need to get our tickets soon and all this stuff. So I'm, I'm, you, you were on our mind actually. <laughs> we can't wait to see you, man. When am I coming to Ohio? I'm actually coming to Ohio in September for the mid, man. I don't know who came up with the name of that. Mid Ohio Valley Pen Turner Gathering. Is that the right name? Um, I'm going to be there for that. So uh, September, I think it's the f like 12th through 14th, something like that. So yeah. Should be pretty fun. We got a lot of things going on this year. Okay, so I've talked quite a bit. Um, let me set up the camera a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of pan it around from here. Um, some of you guys may not know how the shop was, so I'll just kind of walk over and kind of show you what's happening. So uh, you might notice the lathe, let's just start on this side. The lathe is actually in a different position now. And so it used to be sitting this way. And the problem is when I'm turning, all the shavings land on the work surface and I didn't like that. So I decided to turn it this way. Hopefully it'll change that a little bit so I'm not covering the work table. Uh, the other thing is behind there, there's a dust collector and I'm gonna start hooking up dust collection because every time I turn something really large, I end up covering my entire shop with dust. So I'm gonna, I, I've always said like, oh, dust collection on a lathe is kind of useless, but you're not gonna collect a bunch of the shavings. They're gonna come back at you, some of them. But 
I'm hoping to catch some of the fine dust that comes off of some of these larger things uh, at the source. So we've got a couple things going on there. The little buffer machine is kind of on a, 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 a mobile cart now, so I'll just kind of pull that out when I need it. Um, and then let me, let me kind of go up a little bit. And then the rest of the shop is quite a bit different, actually. Uh, kind of looks the same, but, but a little different. And so what I've basically done is just tried to push everything back into this corner. So these are all the dust makers. The table saw causes a lot of dust when I'm cutting blanks. So now it's going to be a little bit more contained in this small area. Uh, this used to be this way, and it would kind of go that way. Um, and then I got sanders, you know, and a couple band saws. Um, and on this wall, I'm trying to run some hardwired, hardline dust, dust collection. And I've moved my dust collector on the other side of this little wall thing. So basically, I kind of have this like island of tools, a little kind of work area that I can get a lot of stuff done here. And uh, just kind of got rid of and moved stuff that I don't use. So I'm hoping that this will work a little bit better. We still got a couple things to do. I got to move some, some electrical lines. Um, and then I'm hoping on this wall, uh, the, the idea, my plan so far is at the end of that dust collection line, I don't know if you can see that PVC pipe that's going to run along the wall. I'll have a vacuum system like I, I usually use right there. So I should be able to get most of the dusty areas, but on this wall, I want to put like cabinets. Um, and I'm, I'm currently looking to find the right solution for me for that. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, I don't know if there's, there's just, you know, sometimes you get to a point where things don't work the way you want. And if you just make a couple minor changes, it'll work better. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, cl cleaning up. Like where does the dust go? And trying to get the stuff that makes a mess to just make a mess in one little area type thing. That's, that's the idea with that. And also free up areas, free up space for machines that I use all the time. I had, you know, I have a, an eight inch joiner and a router table and I have all these other machines like a planer that I never use. So why not get those things out of the way, <laughs> you know, and those are the types of things that you kind of stow away and pull out when you need it, you know, if I need it. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, I do have air filtration and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, it just, even, even with all that going on, I, I, it would cover my, my entire shop. So I'm hoping that that little dust collector, I need to kind of set up a little thing uh, that'll collect it at the lathe, but I think it'll hopefully be better. And then, like I said, second part of the plan is I want to rearrange this area for casting stuff. One of the biggest problems is I have no lighting over my head. Um, so and it's hard to get cameras in here since I do a lot of camera stuff. So I, I kind of want to rearrange this so that it's a little bit brighter and I can get better shots with the camera, easier setups. So anyway, that's what's happening, guys. I hope, uh, uh, let's see if anybody, hey, Merry Christmas, Anna. Thanks, I appreciate it. If anybody has any questions about the setup, um, one thing I guess actually that I didn't, I, one one problem for the live streams I can't I won't be able to really get cameras down too far down there which is kind of problematic but um, I'll try and kind of show you guys the new tool um, I've been wanting a belt sander like one of the heavy duty belt sanders for a long time I always had a real problem paying a lot of money for one for these floor sanding ones but you can't really see it but it's a what is this a six by 48 i think or whatever one of the heavy duty you know belts and then there's a disc sander on the other side and so far i haven't really used it yet but so far i'm very happy with the the machine uh it just it looks uh, compared to the bench top models that thing is way more heavy duty so <laughs> i think it's gonna be a pretty oh i didn't oh dang it i forgot <laughs> i didn't switch the cameras sorry guys I'm over here talking and pointing at stuff. Anyway, let's do that again. So here's the, the six by 48. It kind of tilts up or down. And then on this side, there's a 12 inch disc, but very, very powerful. Um, and, and I just, I needed a bigger belt uh, for a lot of the stuff that I do. So uh, like I said, I'm very happy with how it is, you know, how that machine is much more substantial than the, the, the bench top models. Um, but bench top models are extremely cheaper, <laughs> a lot cheaper than that thing was. So uh, the good news about that is, though, I actually, 
uh, one of my credit cards is hooked up to Amazon and, and I can use points. And I had so many points that I actually paid half price <laughs> for that thing. So it wasn't as much of a, an expense as it really could have been. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I don't know. I kind of like doing this organization stuff in the shop. It, it's, I haven't done it for a long time because it takes so much time uh, to do that kind of stuff, but, but it's pretty fun. Let's see. Let me miss, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, don't think I missed anything. All right. So let's, uh, let's get going with, uh, this casting. So what I had in mind, uh, and one thing I want to mention, so I have my temperature gauge. So I want to, I'm going to hit the back of this pot. Now, one thing to, to keep in mind about this, I, and I'm not, I'm not an expert, so I, but I'm just kind of bringing it up as, as something to think about. The way that this thing works is it just heats up an object, like the radiant heat, rather than um, other heaters, like the space heaters, they heat up the air in the room, right? So... The one question that I have, I'm guessing that as long as I heat the pot up, um, I'm getting the same effect, but it isn't heating the air around everything. So I, I want to make that distinction. I'm not sure what's going on inside the pot, but you know, I am, it is warm in this general area. So I think that this is a, a it's a way that you could go. Um, you know, if you're, if you're in a, an area that, that it gets pretty cold, you may go for like a, a blanket and a heater and, and the dish and all that kind of stuff to, to, to overcome that. Um, but so I thought what we'd do is go for one of these two inch size blanks today. Um, and then what we have, like I said, let me get, let me switch to camera views. Okay, turning. So this one, we got some of these, uh, whoa, zoom out these paper shreds. And so this is just paper. The nice thing about this is you just toss it in. You don't have to do anything to that. Got a little bit of a ribbon. Um, so I thought we could kind of, you know, that's kind of fun. We could put all that stuff together and then just top it off with a little bit of glitter. So, you know, have a little bit of fun. So have some holiday cheer blank making. <laughs> so, uh, oops, wrong one. Let me, oops, this one. Okay. So let me, I'm going to do, I'm, I've been kind of liking this over the shoulder kind of shot where you can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to toss this in the heater or in the heater, in the oven. Can you see it? Sort of. Um, I have a little toaster oven over here and I have that set to about, I think it's kind of set at around 150 is what I'm shooting for. Um, I don't recommend, a lot of people ask what temperature to put those at. Um, I'm not trying to get the thing up to 150 really. So I don't want to leave it in there for like an hour, right? Um, that the temperature that I have it at is good for that kind of 15 or maybe 20 minutes of working time, you know, while you're getting everything prepared and then take it out. You don't really want to leave those things and get them like super ridiculous hot. Like I would say like, if you can get the mold to 130, that's good. If you can get your oven set to, to 130, and then leave it in there for however long. That's probably the best number, uh, just to kind of let you guys know. That's a good number to, to heat them at. It just works out that I heat it up a little, I, I turn the temp up a little higher than that, but leave it in less than, you know, for, for like a shorter amount of time. So I'm just trying to get it up to about that 130. And I can just kind of tell at this point, um, if it's too hot to hold, that's too hot. You know, like if you can't just hold it in your hand, I want to get it nice and warm, but not like burning. So let me get, uh, so I think what we're just going to do is just clear. Um, I think that'll probably be uh, the best way to go for this or, um, tinted. So we, I don't know how to do this exactly. <laughs> we have three people that have super chatted. So uh, let me ask you guys, considering what we're going to put in this blank, and it'll, we'll just kind of go with like majority rules, I guess, with that. Um, you know, we're, we're going to toss some, some goodies in here. Um, do you guys, what are your thoughts? Do you think we should go with clear? Um, I could tint the resin like green or red, uh, you know, something like that. Or we could go with white uh, and make it opaque and have this stuff kind of, you know, pop out. Now, I think it's going to obscure this. Mostly it's not going to be very obvious what's in there. I, so I'd kind of generally recommend probably staying away from an opaque color, but I just want to ask you guys, what do you guys think? So, 
Uh, Jamie, Anna, and Jen, what do you guys think we should do for the colors? And I, I ran out of battery. Dang it. Come on. So uh, I haven't been keeping, I haven't been doing video. Um, like, like I was saying, I, I, I haven't been on social media because when I undertake something that's going to take a lot of my time and mental <laughs> capacity, I usually just get completely engrossed in it and nothing else, you know, I lose myself in it sort of thing. So what I'm going to be doing for video for this kind of shop, I'm just going to do kind of another shop tour. Uh, probably at the beginning of the year or, you know, whenever I get this stuff done. So just to let you know what's going on there. There we go. Got a little bit more light going on. All right. So Jamie wants me to pick. Oh, hopefully Jen's back. So um, what I was asking is uh, you, Anna, and Jamie... What I was going to go for is like clear and just toss the, the goodies in. Um, and, and since we have three super chatters and, and we're really not picking colors for this, I was just going to ask, you know, what do you think? Should we go with clear? Should we go with like a maybe just tinted green, but, but transparent? I was leaning towards clear, but um, let me know if you have any thoughts. And I, the other th thought that I had was maybe white, but I don't really like that idea. The ribbon is definitely not going to be visible at that point. And these things will create kind of cool patterns, but, you know, Dave, don't pick JP's. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, we're, we're definitely going to glitter it, too. We got red and green glitter. And, and we got these paper shreds, and then we got a ribbon. And then we're going to put it in the two inch by six inch mold. All right. So I, I think clear is a good idea. So I, I, I'm not seeing, I don't, is it? Yeah. Anna wanted clear. Okay. So everybody likes clear. Uh, we got our pressure pot warming up. So let me get my little book. O notes out. I always take notes. I didn't pre pre do this this time. I was, I've been trying to get, I've been working on that dust collection stuff. <laughs> God. Uh. I don't know about you guys, but running a dust collection line, trying to piece together, like if you just go with the, the metal duct work, that's fine. But it costs like, you know, a billion dollars to run duct work. So I, I just bought the, the ABS sewer pipe, but then trying to connect that stuff into like the standard dust collection fittings or the, the, the you know, flex hose stuff. It is such a pain, you know, you can run all the, the hard line, but then trying to get everything connected to the actual machines is such a pain. So 12, 20, man, only five days until Christmas. Woo. I still have a couple of Christmas presents to, to get and wrap still, but most of everything is done. Um, <clears throat> been pretty on top of it and kind of had an idea for most people. So we're just going to call this the Christmas blank. We're going to be using uh, slow set clear, Alumalite clear slow set. And we're using what I call my two inch... I just call this a two inch mold. You basically it's for making like a two inch block. You could make, you know, handles, you could cut it into four pen blanks. If you wanted, uh, you could probably even get a stopper out of the end plus four pen blanks. So I like that size because you can do a lot of stuff. You could do knife scales, you know, like there's, there's so many things that you can do with a two inch by two inch by, you know, about six or so long, uh, that I kind of tend to lean towards those. Um, for, for this kind of thing. So that mold holds about 400 grams of resin. So we're going to go with 200 and 201, <clears throat> 200 grams of part A, 201. And, and I just, with Alumalite clear, I add just a tiny bit of extra part B just to make sure everything's really dead clear. You do not want to do that with any other resin. It just only works with Alumalite clear. Um, and so it's going to be clear. And then we're going to add um, paper shreds, and so I'll, I'll get I'll get another shot for anybody that's wasn't hasn't seen like a close up of this stuff, what we're sticking in there. So paper shreds, a ribbon, and some glitter. We got some red and some green. All right, so it's a pretty simple casting, not a whole lot going on. Let me get these things under the other camera so you can see what we're working with here. I think it's going to be a pretty fun blank, honestly. 
I like, we, last time we used those little paper shreds, they turned out really cool. So turning, so here are the paper shreds. They're just literally shredded paper, but they're like little zigzags. So they're pretty cool looking, red and green. And then I got a ribbon and I got to take this uh, staple off. Let's get that off. We're not mounting it to anything. Uh, so we just got some ribbon and I don't know what kind of material this is exactly, but some sort of a, I don't know, fabric -y thing. And then we got a couple of glitters, red and green. These are the tinsel glitters from uh, solarcolordust.com. Or you can actually, Glitter Hippo, I think is like their sister company, but it's the same stuff on each site. So let's see. First good cast this week. Nice. That's awesome, Robert. I always like to... I always like to hear people that, you know, got their first thing under their belt, starting to have fun. <clears throat> Casting's pretty cool. It really opens up a lot of doors for you, I think. Um, it allows you to do a lot of stuff. And, and it, one of the nice things is it allows you to use, you know, kind of useless materials a lot of times, you know, worthless wood, that whole thing. Um, it, it really kind of, I don't know. Opens up some doors, allows you to get creative with, you know, colors and all kinds of different stuff. So good to hear that you're, you've dove in. All right. So I'm just, I was just blowing out a little, there's a little dust in the bottom of this thing. So we're going to zero out the scale. Let me get some gloves on. Um, yeah. Welcome Dave. How's it going? Hippos. <laughs> all right. And then all, all I'm going to do is we're going to mix this up, pretty much dump it in that mold, and then I'm just going to kind of shove some stuff in. And then, like I said, we're going to stick it in this pressure pot because I got my, my heat dish aimed at this to kind of keep everything nice and warm. Uh, our heater's out in the shop. Again, if you just didn't know heaters out in the shop. So we're just trying to kind of keep everything nice and warm while the, the resin cures. And then when this is done, I'm going to pull it out of the pot, take it into a room that we have with a space heater, a smaller room that we can keep heated. And it's at 70 degrees. So no problems curing there. So I've zeroed it out. We're going to go with 200 grams of part A. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Definitely. I just kind of, I, I had that stuff. Like I said, uh, St Steven sent this, the, the ribbons and the, the paper shred in last Christmas. I, th I think it was last Christmas. So I knew that I had some stuff that we could play with. And I, I know we did candy canes last time, but I thought let's do another kind of holiday fun thing. And mainly I was, I was kind of, I really wanted to show you what, what I'm doing to kind of deal with that heat issue. It's not really that cold in the shop. Uh, I don't know exactly how cold it gets overnight. Um, it's not that bad, you know, and, and I just want to like let everybody know that it's not like it's freezing in our shop overnight and, and I'm not in like, it's not the same situation as being in like a two car garage, not that dire. Um, however, um, I just, with, with my products, I, I like to keep temperatures regulated. And so I, I'm just, I'd rather kind of wait till our heater just gets fixed. So I don't have to, you know, wonder how are these going to turn out? I overshot that a little bit. So I'm actually going to take some of this out, <clears throat> bring it back down to 200, zero that out. And then we're going to add 201 grams of part B again, just to, it kind of with the Lumalite clear a tiny bit of extra part B is a good idea for the, if you're doing dead clear or transparent castings, it just helps to make sure that you don't get those little white streaks that can, can happen sometimes. Uh, there we go. So zeroed out 201. So I'm excited to go see Star Wars. I heard it's getting bad reviews and I really don't care about reviews. <laughs> I'll make my own decision. I'm excited about it. We watched, we went back and watched all of them from, from, you know, episode one. And we, we actually did it in that order one through seven or eight, I don't know, whatever we're on three, six. Yeah. So eight. Uh, so we're primed. We're ready for the final chapter of Star Wars. 
It's so exciting. Sneaking up on it, 195. Getting there. Haven't been snowboarding again yet. I was thinking about going Tuesday, but I got so much stuff. The shop's so torn apart that I decided to go to work instead, <laughs> which is probably good. <clears throat> I'll snowboard next year. Scale's kind of moving around. One other thing that I want to mention, cooler temperatures, uh, your scale can kind of be affected by cooler temperatures. They're actually another thing that manufacturers generally recommend that you use a scale at uh, room temperatures. So just kind of keep an eye on it. Sometimes when it's too cold, it can kind of be all, you know, weird and uh, it might be better to, to, you know, turn it on and kind of let it warm up if you're heating your shop uh, from, from cooler temperatures and start using the scale at higher temperatures. It may just be a little bit more accurate or just not kind of fluctuate as much. Depends on, you know, which scale you're using and all that kind of stuff. But just kind of wanted to mention that. So we got 201. So let me get my other camera in here. So with the Lumilite Clear slow set, we got about, and at this point, you know, with the temperatures in the shop right now, we probably have 15 minutes or so of, of working time. So we got plenty of time. <clears throat> let me get this. Switch cameras so you can see me doing some stuff. Yeah, you need to heal up. Seven or eight months. Oh, man. That's no fun. I, two things that I really don't like <laughs> are being sick or being hurt. Oh, I just, you feel like I can't do anything, you know? <clears throat> Especially at, like... Usually like right, like if you have a surgery or something like that, like right away, like for like a, a few days, like you're just kind of like, whatever, I'm just going to lay here. But then like a week after you're just, you start getting restless. And then a lot of times you can't do anything for so long with injuries. Same thing with being sick. You just feel miserable anyway. And you can't do stuff. And it's just like, uh, don't like that. I'm scraping the sides of the cup, the bottom, making sure that I get all of the part A and part B mixed thoroughly. Um, Alumilite's is pretty easy to get mixed. You know, you just give it a good, good mix, and generally once it's cleared up, it's pretty well mixed. Um, I recommend for, for epoxies, typically, you know, they usually have a long working time. So, you know, you, you have a few minutes to spare anyway. It's not going to hurt anything to, to keep mixing. You can't over stir, but you can sure under mix resin and you'll get curing issues if you don't mix properly. So I'm going to hit my little timer just so I know how much time we have um, or how long I've been working with it. But again, this is going to be pretty simple. Now, what I want to do is I want to wait for this uh, cooler temperatures, the nice thing is the resin's a little bit thicker anyway, but what I wanna do is kinda wait till the end uh, of the working time because for two reasons, it'll, it'll kinda thicken up a little bit more and hold, uh, you know, things like glitter, they won't sink or float or anything. Um, it'll hold it in place, but also if you kinda wait till the end of the working time, you know, pour it in your mold and then pour your resin in and then kinda place these things in a little bit later than you know later than sooner <laughs> let's say um, if it's at the end of the working time and you've gotten everything pretty well you know put where you want it in the blank you're not going to have that long until it fully hardens and locks it in place so that's another reason it's not just necessarily that you're waiting for some special temperature or something like that it's more just that you're trying to get stuff locked in place and if you wait till the end then there's not much more time until it's fully like hardening up and there's no question it'll lock stuff in place at that point. So uh, we got a few minutes here to spare. So I, like I said, I think we, I, I, I like to use temperature. I, I still think temperature is probably one of the most accurate ways. So I, I have one of these um, uh, infrared thermometer guns. It's great. You can kind of monitor. So right now we're at like 82 degrees. Let me like stir it up and stuff. But I always like to stir it up and then hit it with the gun. 85. Um, I'm waiting till like 95, 100. That, I find that's, that's been pretty good lately. 
Um, anywhere between 95 and 105 is a good temperature for, for keeping colors separated and stuff like that uh, with Illumilite clear. I don't know what the temperatures are for other resins, but um, generally that's pretty good, I find, in the temperatures that we're in. I do find that in the summer when it's pretty warm, like it was, you know, in the 80, 80 degrees or so in the shop on average this summer, I did have to kind of wait a little bit longer um, and, and, and have a higher temperature. I was waiting till about 120, I think, or 110. I forget what it was. I have it written down. But as long as your temperature is relatively stable, I think the temperature gun, the, the, the ambient temperature in the shop is relatively kind of stable. The, the temperature gun for your resin, that's a, that's a more accurate and consistent way to do this. Time relies on you, you know, how you, you have to mix it the same for the same amount of time every time. And you got to make sure that you're hitting it the right time, you know, turning the, the, the timer on at the right time for it to be consistent uh, for, for keeping colors separated. So I don't, I like having a clock going, you know, but I think that the temperature gun is a more, a better way to do it in general. And it might take a little bit of playing around to find the right temperature that works best for you for keeping colors separated, but um, between time and the temperature, um, you should know when, when you're approaching the end of the working time. And if you don't know how long you have and what temperatures there are, just mix up some resin and just let it harden. You know, <laughs> Just keep hitting the temperature gauge and, and look at it. And I know it's a waste of resin, but it'll tell you exactly how long you have and what temperatures um, you know, how thick it is at what temperature and all that kind of stuff. So it's a good, good thing to do. <laughs> Wine country, not much snow. Yeah. I like snow. You're getting snow for Christmas. Oh man. I think we might actually, um, I think we are getting maybe a, a little bit of a storm, which will be greatly appreciated. I, I'm really happy the, the, you know, ski resorts, they got a really good base already, which, you know, compared to last year, we already have, I think, more snow up on the mountain than, than we probably, like it took us till about mid-January to get the same amount last year. So now the gun's at 91. Like I said, I'm probably just gonna wait till about 100 and then we'll start pouring this stuff and, and getting everything in there. <clears throat> just to make sure. So who's excited for Maker Central? That's what I'm excited about. That's coming up soon. And actually before that though, is the SoCal pen turner gathering so i'm looking forward i think that's going to be like the first little event thing and then actually next uh, march probably sometime in march i'll be doing another something at turner's warehouse i'm not sure we're probably going to have some classes uh but chad and i are kind of trying to figure out we're, we're trying to come up with a plan i think we're going to have some sort of a meetup type thing uh this time as well last time was kind of a quick quick in and out for me uh, this time it'll be a couple days that I'll be there. So probably classes on one day and then we're going to do like a meetup. Maybe I'll do like a, a free demo type thing. Possibly. I don't know. We're, just, we're still trying to kind of get the details going and the dates and all that, but probably sometime in March. That's pretty cool. 94 degrees now. Time to get a drink of water. So is anybody doing anything cool for Christmas? Any, you guys have any fun holiday traditions for Christmas that you do, like family stuff or? Mike McEwen's ready for Maker Central. <laughs> I'm glad you're coming, man. That's gonna be awesome. You're gonna like it, I think. I think you're really gonna like that event. Oh, I hope you can go, Christina. I think you'd really enjoy it. I had a blast last year. It was so fun. Such a good event. So many cool different things. And I don't know. It, it's kind of nice, you know, compared to like the, the turning symposiums, the wood turning symposiums here in the U.S. Those are great. I love them. But 
<clears throat> you know, it's not as much of a, like a YouTuber thing. Like there's just so many people at Maker Central, all these YouTubers that everybody knows. And it's really cool to kind of hang out, see what they're up to, meet them. And I don't know, so many people there too, that just, uh, the, the attendance was just amazing. Lots of kids too, which is pretty cool. Lots of stuff going on. So it's getting pretty thick at this point. I think I'm ready to, we'll get it in the mold, start pushing the things in. The biggest problem that you have with resin is, you know, you want to kind of wait in this case, but at the same time, you know, your best bet is to push stuff down into your resin. And actually, I think I'm, what I, we're just going to add a little bit. I don't want to go crazy with the glitter. We're just going to add a little bit and I'm actually going to stir it in uh, beforehand. So you guys can see what I'm doing, right? Just a little bit of a, you know, uh, stir stick thing worth. <clears throat> we'll do a little bit of red. So we'll have some red and some green sparklies. This is that holographic glitter. There you go. Not too much. Sometimes less is more when it comes to this stuff. That'll just add a little bit of sparkle to everything and make it look kind of cool. So let's get this kind of tilted down so you can see in the cup what it's looking like you know somewhat sparse but definitely you can see all these little goodies in there just kind of pour it mix them around a little bit i gotta be honest just that is pretty cool actually that's a pretty neat looking blank it's not stupendous but you know and then what i'm going to do is we're just going to kind of push these guys i'm going to kind of just float them on the top for a sec They'll probably kind of sink in a little bit. I don't want it, I want to have some clear spaces uh, in this. So I, I don't want to load it totally up. That's, that's another way you could go. That's a different look, but I'm just going to kind of put a little bit in. I want to have some clear, like, you know, that negative spaces in this a little bit instead of like totally loaded up. And then with our ribbon, I think I'm just going to kind of put that, let's see, we got a little open area a lot, a lot more clear than the, the stuff. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of push this down in over here. Kind of change it up a little bit where this, this ribbon's kind of on the top on one end and sort of on the bottom on the other end. And then we'll put a few of these paper shreds on top of the ribbon over here. This is Christmassy, guys. It's Christmassy. Woo! We'll add a little bit more on the top here. So again, this could make uh, another thing that I actually forgot to mention is bottle stoppers. That's kind of the most obvious choice, I guess, or a handle, or like I said, you can pretty much do anything with this two inch kind of base. It's kind of a general thing that you could end up cut, getting a lot of different stuff out of. So it's looking pretty good. I think uh, at this point, pretty much ready to just shove it in or I mean, shove it in, <laughs> stick it in the pressure pot. What do you guys think of that? Can you see it? Hopefully I got, see, this is the problem that I have, especially with these streams. The lighting is terrible over here. I need some good overhead lighting. So hopefully next year that will improve. All right, so let's get this thing lifted back up. Pop it in the pressure pot. Let's see what the temperature is just for the heck of it. I wanna see what the resin temperature is. Yeah, we're at about one, 12 right now so it's definitely thickening and warmed up and then i'm just feeling this so it's definitely warmer on this side this this side of the pot isn't nearly as warm one thing i can do is kind of move this little thing closer that should help a little bit but i want to keep the the warmth you know keep that blank as warm as possible Another thing that you can do also, um, I, I just, I've never really done this and I don't feel comfortable without doing some tests. 
before I really show people what's going on with it is you can post cure the resin. So, you know, once you pull it out of the, the pressure pot, you can put it back in the oven. I think I would recommend just contacting your manufacturer of whatever resin it is. Um, I don't know these things off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> contact the manufacturer and they'll tell you what temperature and how long, um, and you can post cure it. And you're basically accelerating that five to seven day, um, cure time to, you know, whenever it, you take it out of the oven. So that's another way to do this and it'll, it'll speed things up. My problem is I just, I've never done it before and I don't want to just do it <laughs> for the heck of it on the, the stream. I want to, you know, I want to have enough time to try it out and turn things and, and kind of see what's going on and do some testing before I really do that stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just, I'm definitely not going to just do that for the heck of it because it can speed things up for my products. The blanks that I sell, I just, I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing it. So anyway, so that's, that's all we got today. Like I said, we're just going to do kind of a quick one. I want to make sure that I keep this pot heated uh, with that heater kind of aiming right at that one. Uh, let me clear my, my timer out. But anyway, but I wanted to do a live stream, like I said, and kind of show you a little bit of what's going on, give you kind of a sneak peek into to the, the evolution of the workshop. Um, like I said, I'll do a full shop tour once I get everything kind of in place and, and finished uh, for the most part. And if there's anything that's very specific um, that deserves its own video, I'll do an, you know, a video on it. Uh, but I'm not really going to do like a time lapse and show you the changes. I'm just going to kind of, it'll be, once it's done, we'll do a little shop tour. It'll be pretty cool. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys all have a wonderful, you know, Christmas, holiday, whatever you're celebrating, enjoy it. Um, I'm not going to be doing a live stream next week. Uh, so let me, hold on a minute. I'm, well, I'm pretty, I'm almost certain. Let me look at the calendar real quick. I am going to be, let's see here. Yeah. So not, n we're not doing a live stream next Friday. Okay, guys, uh, we'll be back. The next one will be on the third of 2020, January, 2020, a new decade guys. Oh my God. So unless I spur of the moment, do something, you know, keep your eyes peeled on, on like Instagram and Facebook, but pretty much we're, we're not going to be doing one next week because what I'm going to be doing is I'm taking that week off. And like I said, then I'm going to be tackling the casting area and trying to get this thing kind of reassembled and, and better basically. So uh, again, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday, uh, very happy and safe new year as well. Uh, and, uh, I just also want to say thank you to everybody for showing up to the live streams, for joining the fun. Uh, all of your support is amazing. I really appreciate it guys. And so, like I said, let's just ring in the new year, uh, on a, on a high note. And, and, and again, thank you guys all for, for joining the fun. So, uh, I'm going to stop real quick and make sure I'm not missing any, uh, questions that came up at the end here. Um, let's see here. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I missed anything. Oh, Mert's got some, some stuff. So, uh, Mert's saying that, uh, post cure works well with loom light clear slow six. Oh, good Lord. So that's probably why I haven't done it also 16 hours at 150. I mean, that'll definitely speed it up. Uh, I, I think that might be, I was thinking, I was hoping it was just a few hours. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a little bit of time, but like I said, that's better than, than, you know, uh, leaving it, having to leave it for a week, uh, for, especially for people that are selling blanks. If you need to make a blank and get it to a customer, you know, 16 hours, you're going to get the thing to them the next day. You can ship it. That's one thing that I, that that's a problem. Uh, and I just want to also mention before I go, uh, what I do not recommend if you are selling blanks or, or even just making them and sending them to someone, um, again, make sure that you've waited the five or seven days or however long it takes to fully cure the blanks before you ship them in an airplane because they stick them in the belly of the airplane and who knows how cold it's going to get in that, that airplane. And again, you could run into problems. So just make sure that your blanks are fully cured before you ship them. That's a good Christmas, Christmas, uh, sharing <laughs> tidbit. So anyway, guys, I guess that's about it. Uh, again, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy and safe New Year. And I will see you guys all in 2020. That's so crazy. See you guys later.